Hey folks, on this video we're going to make a new furnace out of a bunch of refractory bricks and a cooking pot. The cat's not part of the equation, he just likes to participate. The idea here is to put about six bricks inside this pot and drill a hole through it so that we have a place for the flame to go through. And this way it would make a somewhat modular furnace that is a little bit less improvised than the ones I've been using so far, but also that it can be taken apart and redone anytime. So the first thing we have to do here is to cut some bricks because they are not going to fit like that in here. I did do some math to figure out what's the angle that I need to cut the bricks at. Turns out it's about 60 degrees. And to help with that I'm going to make a little jig with some foam just to hold the bricks at the correct angle because my tile saw is not the best. So, during the filming of this video, the channel just reached 100 subscribers and I would like to take a moment just to thank everybody for your support. Thank you, you guys are awesome. And now, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe! <laughs> now back to the video. I don't have the proper drill for this, this should be done with a diamond drill. I'm trying with this whole saw, but... wearing away the teeth on the saw and not really doing much to the brick. The ancient Egyptians, they supposedly, they used sand to drill things with, so let's give it a try some. This might be working. It's more sand though. One hour later. It took one and a half hours, but we drilled like an Egyptian. Now that our bricks fit neatly inside the pot, we need to drill a hole in here for the blowtorch. There it is. Now the idea for this being modular is not to use any refractory cement or anything between the bricks. So let's fire it up and see how it performs like this as it is. It finally stopped raining so let's light this up and see what we get. I'm gonna bring it to temperature slowly, just to make sure there is no moisture left on those bricks so they don't explode or anything like that. It's my first time working with these bricks, so I have no idea how they behave. They're supposed to be resistant to uh, 1500 degrees Celsius or something? We'll see. I'm going to bring the crucible to temperature and then I'm going to charge it with some aluminum to melt.
furnace made of a cooking pot and some refractory bricks. And we cooked some muffins in it. <laughs> and it works! It works very well. I'm gonna be very happy with melting things with this thing. It sure can melt aluminum. Can it melt brass? Let's find out. Alright, we're going to attempt to melt some brass now. Oh, you should never breathe the fumes of stuff you melt, but brass is particularly nasty. And you don't want to breathe the fumes from brass, so... If you ever do this, wear a respirator. And all the other safety gear necessary. For brass, you have to ramp up the temperature some. We can melt brass with it. That is not bad. I would call that a success. It just takes a little while, but we can melt at least up to brass with it and anything around that melting point. So that wraps it up for now. If you have any questions and comments, just leave them below and don't forget to subscribe. And thank you for watching. See you next time.